This is a video about using a CO2 generator. In this video I'm going to discuss the procedures I've used in generating CO2 for our tanks. First of all we need to make the baking soda charges which is going to be utilizing toilet paper and baking soda. You can use the cheapest baking soda you can find. It won't make a bit of difference with regards to the CO2 output. In order to make 10 gallons of CO2, it'll take 5 eighths of a cup of baking soda. All right, here we are. We're going to make CO2 charges. Make about eighth of a cup or so. And we fold them half like that. And then we take it and we roll it. There's one charge. And there's another charge. That's all there is to it. In my experimenting, I found that an eighth of a cup was a little too much. I settled on about one tablespoon per charge. Obviously, when you want to use the CO2 generator for your tanks, you want to make sure that you take your frogs out because if you don't take your frogs out, the CO2 will kill your frogs as well as all the bugs and critters. Well, the first thing we do to get started is we add vinegar to the CO2 chamber. To make 10 gallons of CO2, you need to add eight and a half cups of vinegar to the CO2 chamber. Then we take the hose that comes from the CO2 separator tank and we stick it in the top of the tank like this. I use the glass lid to kind of hold it in place. We are going to start to take off the lid, install the baking soda charge, screw the lid back on, shake it up a little bit, and we are off. If you stick your ear down by the, uh, oh, there you go. How is it starting to foam up? An over foam. Now you see the purpose of the separator tank. Now the foam is beginning to drop back down. All right, getting ready to drop in the next charge. Drop it in. Put the lid back on as quick as you can. And there it goes again. Starts the new batch. I'm going to show you a little trick here on how to uh, get some of this is, has vinegar that's unreacted on the this side. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug the end of the tube with my thumb here so you can see it stopped. Now we're going to squeeze it. That'll force the vinegar back into the CO2 generator. Getting ready to put the third charge in. All right. 
size. <clears throat> now it enters the separation chamber. Well, we should have made 10 gallons of CO2, but how do we know? I searched all over trying to find ways of detecting CO2 in an enclosed area like a tank, and I found this site which used dry ice and bubble soap, and so I decided to try that. And it kind of works, but it was very difficult. I found lots of problems. I was only able to make one bubble stay and float in on the surface, and so I decided that that wasn't going to really work for us. Then I got thinking about our foggers, and I thought that might be an ideal situation. So I tr set up an experiment to try and see how well our foggers might be able to detect. And so when I kicked it on, lo and behold, the fog bounced right on top of the surface of the CO2, and it really, really worked well. As you can see here, the fog is bouncing uh, really, really nicely. Compare that to a normal shot with the fogger and no CO2 in the tank, and how the fog drops completely down to the floor. Really cool. No CO2. CO2 in the tank. None. CO2 with a bounce. So it gives a real easy way of checking and seeing where the uh, location of the uh, CO2 level is. And that does correspond with about two-thirds of the tank with a 15-gallon tank. That's about the 10-gallon line right there. This is kind of cool right here where the amount of moisture that's in the fog begins to get heavy enough to where it begins to precipitate and rain out almost. Here's a couple of slugs that crawled as far as they could and didn't quite make it. Uh, so looks like the CO2 is working just great. Besides using it to kill the slugs and bugs in your tanks, you can also use it to kill the slugs and bugs and millipedes that might be in the moss that you collect. And that's what I'm doing here. A lot of times pests come in on the plants that you purchase. The tank that I'm gassing right now, the slugs came in on a plant that I purchased. So if you want to do a one-off where you take the plant, put it in a grocery bag or a garbage bag, put the tube inside the mouth of the bag with it and tie it up with a twist tie, not real tight so that the air can escape when you put the inject the CO2 into it. Run the CO2 in, when the bag is full, take the tube out and twist it, tie it tight. I'm going to post build instructions and a lot more information regarding the process on dendroboard.com.